Yo, what's going on guys? DJS here. Got a video for you guys today on how am I able to buy sneakers with uh, with extra money, I guess. Um, and I'm trying to give you guys a couple tips on how you can possibly make extra money as well. I know other YouTubers have covered something similar to this. I figured I would go ahead and chime in. I've gotten asked the question a ton and uh, I figured I would go ahead and give you guys my two cents. Um, I've mentioned it in small videos here and there, but never like fully addressed it. So hopefully we'll be able to get to all of that in this video. First and foremost, so how am I able to buy sneakers? Um, I buy sneakers usually at retail or maybe sometimes a little bit above, but the most I've ever paid is like four thirty for a pair of shoes. Most I'll pay for shoes. I don't want to have a pair of shoes that cost me a thousand dollars. Um, my wife would kill me if I, there was a pair of shoes that, that I paid for that was a thousand dollars. So, uh, to answer that part of the question, or I guess the beginning part of the question is how I'm able to afford them is because I don't buy crazy shoes out there. Now, if you're in middle school or high school and you're looking at a pair of Yeezy twos, and you're looking at these Red Octobers thinking you're going to be able to get a pair for $2,000 and you're going to be excited because you, you have a pair of Yeezy 2s. I just look and I want to shake my head. Unless you come from an extremely wealthy family, your dad owns Google or something like that or is a doctor and you can afford $2,000 shoes, then more power to you. But if you cannot, if you come from a single, uh, single parent family and you live in an apartment or whatever your living circumstances is, which don't get me wrong, is not bad. Um, but if you can't afford it, don't expect it. And all I can say is let that drive you, uh, to want those things maybe later in the future. And something I've touched on in other videos, when I was a kid, I couldn't afford shit. I really couldn't. I couldn't afford sneakers. Um, uh, my, my parents didn't have a lot of money. Uh, it's the same sad stop story and I don't want to go over top over, over and over and again. But what I do want to, um, repeat is all the kids that I looked at when that had the Jordans and had the, the the David Robinson pumps and or had every other shoe that I wanted, the Barclays or, or whatever it was, um, they had. And now I look at them. I, I, maybe I'm friends with some of them on Facebook here and there. And I look and they don't have one pair of sneakers. They, they have maybe cowboy boots or they don't even wear sneakers. They, or they're, you know, there's zero interest in sneakers. It's because they got their fix when they were in high school. Now they've moved on to other things for you guys. Let it be the same way. I mean, if you really, really are passionate about sneakers, um, let that motivate you to make money make money so you can buy those things later on and that's kind of what I've done And that's kind of the tips that I'm going to be sharing with you guys on how I've been able to, to do that But but it is really important live within your expectations and your and your means um, If you can't afford a $200 pair of shoes Don't expect your parents to buy those and as much as I it's as difficult as that is to say Because I wanted that a hundred dollar pair of shoes here and there and I couldn't afford them. My parents can afford them um, but it's a horrible way to Go about and hate your parents because they they're not able to afford something. Um, anyway, moving on from that, I just think it's really important to set your expectations and and as you grow up, make sure your bills are paid. If you're in high school and the only bill you have to pay is your cell phone, make sure your cell phone's paid before you uh, you get a pair of sneakers. Like, don't get your cell phone disconnected because you didn't pay the bill and all of a sudden you got to do the new pair of Jordans or whatever. Make make your bills your priority it is is really important as you grow up. You won't be able to buy a house if you have really bad credit. Like it's important to have good credit and how you get good credit is by paying your bills on time. And if you don't pay your bills on time, you get reported and it's just a bad, bad mess. So make sure you pay your bills on time. Absolutely um, important. Um, but moving on. So I know you guys want more detail on how am I able to afford my sneakers. So let's try to focus on that a little bit. I've been working since I was 15 years old. I started picking berries after I literally was picking berries in a field uh, from 7 a.m. to noon, made $10 a day drove my bike home for a uh, rode my bike home in half an hour and stopped at Taco Bell and spent all my money. Like that's, that's how my first job started out for me. It's just ridiculous. But I, then I went into high school and I, I worked in, in as a dishwasher and then I worked as a, I flipped burgers and then I worked in an ice cream parlor. Like there's a lot of different jobs that I've had growing up to try to make a little bit of extra money. Now, did any of that extra money at this point pay for sneakers? No, hardly any of it because I couldn't afford more than $80 from those Pip and Hirachis that you guys saw in the, one of the, my previous videos that I got on sale for $80. That was my like first purchase that I got in like ninth, ninth grade or something like that, eighth grade, ninth grade. And then in high school, I really just bought very minimal sneakers. If it was on sale, even better. I was one of those kids that shopped at Ross and found name brand things and I was happy that I could find a pair of, of name brand clothes there or something um, and didn't have to pay an arm and a leg because I couldn't, I just, frankly, I couldn't afford it. So um, I worked jobs here and there after i graduated high school i went to college part-time ran into uh ran into working a random job 
and worked in a corporation environment and uh, worked in catering. Then I did uh, like maintenance. I changed light bulbs and clean toilets and stuff like that. I mean, horrible, not very glorious, glamorous work, but I did whatever I had to do to try to make a living or make some sort of money to be able to pay my bills and have extra spending money and, and those sorts of things. So kind of important for you guys to be able to do those types of things, get a job and be able to, to start providing for yourself as soon as you can. Don't expect your parents to give you everything. Uh, as soon as I, I turned 16, I paid for my first car. It was $500. Piece of crap. Uh, it was a piece of crap. And I drove that thing till I was 19. Embarrassing, really hard to get dates, dudes. But it was really hard to afford dates because I didn't have a lot of extra money coming in either. So, um, But man, for, for me, if you guys having enough money in high school, man, I would rather take chicks out on dates. I'd rather go out, hang out with my buddies, uh, and uh, and hang out with my family than, than to buy sneakers. But that's... Maybe me looking back, those are the things that I wish I could have afforded more of uh, back then. Um, fast forward a bit, go to college. I, I started DJing in college. You know, this is where it starts coming into how I made my, I'm able to make my money for um, sneakers. And I started DJing. I started DJing in college, and I uh, I found that I really really enjoyed it. There was a uh, an available bar or whatever that needed a DJ. I started DJing for fifty dollars a night, which isn't very much money, but um, if you consider like I worked four hours and I made 50 bucks at the time, I was like, this is a lot of money. I got a raise after a couple, uh, uh, like the first term, which is like three months. I ended up getting a raise and I was making 75 a night and then like a $50 bar tab, uh, which believe me helped out a lot because I gave chicks free drinks all night long. It was awesome. Uh, it was so much fun. But from that, I ended up evolving and I ended up getting another gig in the DJ town, uh, where I was the head promoter and I was the DJ and basically I went to a venue that was a bigger venue that I could DJ at and uh, I promoted all around town and uh, and ended up uh, being a really big success. I ended up starting off the first time I DJ there over 300, 500 people um, every single Thursday is what we ended up having and it was just crazy. It paid a lot of money and I made well well over $1,000 every Thursday. Like every night I DJed, I made $1,000 and as a college student, a poor college student at that, I was drinking Mickey 22s out out of out of the bottle like for like a dollar fifty like that's what we were drinking in college because I didn't have any money so and then all of a sudden I started making all this money and I was like this is crazy so like I was able to buy some sneakers here and there that I wanted as I saw Jordan releases here and there um, and and I was able to buy some stuff back in 03 and then I really started stockpiling sneakers because I had extra money for the first time in my life I had extra money more than my bills more than my rent in co college cell phone all those other, my car payments car insurance. And then I had all this surplus. So I was like, sweet, I'm going to be able to buy some sneakers or whatever. So I was able to buy some sneakers with some of my extra money with that. Now, while I was making all this extra money, I knew it wasn't going to last forever. And one thing I want you guys to, to, to not take away from this is I'm going to become a DJ now. I'm going to make $1,000 a night. And now I'm going to be able to buy sneakers. It's not that easy. I got very, very lucky in my situation. I met the right people. I networked and I got lucky and things worked out the way it did. It doesn't always work like that. So I uh, don't expect that to be your way to make an income. Um, that being said, I've transitioned from the nightclub thing. Now I DJ a lot of weddings. And so I make a lot of extra money DJing weddings and wedding DJs. If you don't know, I mean, they make 500 to $2,000 for a wedding. So, I mean, I make money in between there. So you can imagine like if I DJ every single weekend for all summer, I mean, which if you never notice, I'm never on Twitter, usually uh, at least not very heavy on the weekends because I'm working, I'm DJing, I'm putting in my nine, 10 hour days, uh, 12 hour days to, to DJ. And I have a lot of fun doing it as silly as that might sound to you guys. But for me, it's really fun for me to DJ a wedding. And I think that that's what you guys can take away from this is finding what you guys are passionate about, what what's really fun for you guys and how you can make money and not just ex make extra money for sneakers, but it, it makes you extra money in general. So you can actually do things that you like and make money. There's ways to do it. And um, I really think that, that you guys uh, can probably find something for you that makes you happy where you're able to make extra money. The other thing is, so that's that's one method that I'm able to make extra money. Um, I have a day job though. I do have a, a nine to five job. I work for my house and I do uh, application management. So I support applications um, and I work for a big company. They have, I think over 150,000, 300,000 people. Some, I know it's a big number difference, but huge amount of people for this company that I work for. And, um, I graduate, you know, I graduated college with business management, so I'm able to have a decent job and that pays for my mortgage payment. I bought a house when I was in college and I've been paying for that since college. Uh, I pay my, my wife's car. I pay all of my bills in the house. Uh, it's really, really important 
to put money in a 401k and to build for your future, but also um, make sure all of your foundation's paid before you go out and buy a pair of sneakers. So that's kind of where I'm at for sure. I have to make sure my foundation's paid before I'm able to go out and buy sneakers. Uh, and luckily for me, I've, I've had, I have multiple little uh, sources of income that I can make extra money. DJing is one of them. And then I also make money off of YouTube. Uh, the website is going to eventually make me a little bit of money, hopefully, but it, I'm not expecting a ton of money, but uh, like YouTube pays a little bit of money as well. If you guys have not seen that, or I did a video about a long, long time ago on how you can make money on YouTube, but I have three channels on YouTube. I have a video game channel with 55,000 subscribers and I have 13 million views on that channel. Um, so I've, I make a little bit of money every month. Maybe it's not a lot. Maybe it's just enough for one, maybe two pairs of sneakers for that month. I don't know. Like it depends, but, uh, but it's something and it brings in a little bit of extra income. So I'm able to enjoy playing video games, make, make a uh, commentary on video games for YouTube and make enough money for a pair of sneakers or something. It's kind of, it's kind of a nice, uh, reward for doing something that I like to like to do. I turn this hobby into something else also with sneakers because I like to share my passion with sneakers and like the website says collective kicks, it's a collective environment of all of us sharing the same passion and like that is sneakers. And if I can make a little bit of money off of the sneakers, uh, I'm, I mean, by posting videos or whatever it is, then I'm, you know, I'm all for it. And that's why there's advertisements on the videos because they're monetized and I'm able to make a little bit of money on, uh, the videos that I post. So that's another little way that I'm able to make extra money. So between DJing and YouTube, uh, multiple channels, and uh, my day job, I'm able to make extra money to be able to pay for things. Now I know that, again, there's other YouTubers that have made videos similar to this. I know this is a long-winded video because that's the way I usually do things, unfortunately. Uh, man, I, I've tried to redo this video like five times, 10 times, and every time I'm just like, ah, it's such a long video. But, um, but I wanted my points to get across to you guys. But hopefully the takeaway from this video is to motivate yourself. It's, it's look up the word intrinsic motivation. That's, that's something that I think is important. Intrinsic motivation. That's motivation with, from within. And if you can find that motivation to su succeed in life and to make a, 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 an income that exceeds your basic needs, then I think, um, you'll be in a good spot in life. And, and this is really for those, this is a video for those the underdogs out there, for those of you out there that have a, are, are from a family that maybe a broken family, maybe, maybe your parents are divorced. Maybe, uh, you don't have a lot of income. Maybe you live again in an apartment or you don't live in a great neighborhood or you don't have a lot of material things. I, I think that there's, um, I, I don't get to express it enough because this is just, Hey, look at all my material crap in the background. But me as a person, as materialistic as it might look like I might be with sneakers, like I, I'm, I don't consider myself Somebody, I don't look down upon somebody, other people that don't have something, I guess. And that's like probably one of the most important things that I've taken away from coming from a, an area where I didn't have any money to being able to, to afford a good lifestyle for myself, where I'm able to, to vacation and, and take care of my wife and have fun and buy sneakers and those things. Um, just never look down and, and never look at other people like they're not worthy of, of what you have because uh, they don't have any money. And, um, now I'm just preaching, dudes. I don't even know what I'm going going at for here. But just sneakers are not life. I mean, really, sneakers are a luxury. It's an absolute luxury item, and you don't have to have sneakers. It's just something extra that uh, we enjoy. Uh, take girls on dates. Go go hang out with your friends. Hang out with your family. Those things are important. Uh, but motivate yourself if you really are into sneakers and you really want to be able to buy something. Motivate yourself to the point where you're able to uh, find some sort of work and work hard for the things that you want. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, this isn't like the, there's not a magic, uh, solution. You have to get lucky. There's a, uh, some amount of luck in, involved as well, but you, you just have to find whatever the niche is for you to motivate you to be able to be successful in whatever it is. Try not to emulate other people and what they did for success. Uh, but, uh, but try to look at that surrounding and then think how you can apply that to your own situation. Um, this is pretty much long enough, dude. I don't even know how I've, just gone on for this long to talk about this but uh, if you guys are still watching this video give the video a thumbs up and and uh and leave a comment saying i watched the whole thing or something like that and if it was helpful and and you guys appreciate the video then uh leave a comment or hit me on, on twitter let me know but uh very long-winded i will let you guys go now i will say goodbye and uh thanks for uh for watching um take care guys we'll catch you guys later peace